It was a fine morning when Dora started recalling about her lesson, thinking about what her teacher told her to research. Oh hello! What are you doing today? I have to do a research about ex post facto. Would you like to join me? Great! Where do we have to go get data about ex post facto research? Who can we ask for help when we don't know which way to go? The map! If there's a place you gotta go, I'm the one you need to know. I'm the map, 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 I'm the map. To look for ex post facto research, you need to go to the library and find a book about the ex post facto. Then you have to visit the hospital and look for a cousin, Dr. Dexter. And then the last. You have to go to the laboratory. If there's a place you gotta go, I'm the one you need to know. I'm the map, 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 I'm the map. Okay, first the library, then the hospital, and lastly the laboratory. Say it with me. Library, hospital, laboratory. Come on, come on. Yay, we are here! Now we have to look for the book entitled Research. Do you know where the book is? You do? Where? Oh, there it is! Now we know what is an ex post facto research means. But how can ex post facto can be relevant to the researcher? When is the research used? Hmm. Oh, I know. Let's visit the hospital and ask my cousin, Dr. Dexter. Come on, Mama knows. Everybody, let's go. Come on, let's get to it. I know that we can do it. We made it to the hospital. Dr. Dexter? Dr. Dexter? No. Ah, you scared me. Anyways, we need your help. How can I help you? Are you familiar with ex post facto research? Well, of course. We use ex post facto research for conducting social research when it's not possible or acceptable to manipulate the characteristics of human participants. Like in the field of social science, and it can be applied in science also. In science, for example, I'm conducting a study about the ratings of the newly diagnosed HIV cases per region in the Philippines in the year of 2016. Here, take a look at my research paper. Oh. Is that so? How does ex post facto give importance to your research? Well, because of the past studies of the case, we refer our studies with that and, you know, we observed the increase and decrease of the ratings. So it means past can still be important for the future studies. Exactly. If you want to understand ex post facto better, I can recommend you to Dr. Mickey Mouse. He's a psychologist. Maybe he can give you another application of ex post facto in his field of study. You can find him in the social science and political lab. Thank you so much, Dr. Dexter. You're welcome, Dora, and good luck with your research. Come on, Mama knows. Everybody, let's go. Come on, let's get to it. I know that we can do it. We made it to the laboratory. Look, there's Dr. Mickey Mouse. Hello, doctor. My name's Dora. Do you have the time to answer regarding ex post facto research? How can I help you? How do you apply ex post facto research in your studies? Hmm, I have your copy of my research. Follow me. For example, I want to know how weight influences the self-esteem levels in adults. So the participants would be separated into different groups. Underweight, for normal weight, and for overweight, their self-esteem levels will be measured. And this is an ex post facto design because a pre-existing characteristic was used to form the groups. Oh, okay. So to compare the different results, one must have a pre-existing characteristic to form that certain group. Yes, and we use that pre-existing quality to proceed with the result. Because 
weight is a pre-existing quality? Yes, the participants are categorized by their pre-existing characteristics. Like what I said, weight influences the self-esteem. To test the participants whether the weight that they have influences their self-esteem. That's correct. How will you get the results? Well, through questionnaire. Thank you so much.